right, everybody, welcome to Bear Bets, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Score big with DraftKings Sportsbook, the best place to bet on touchdowns. Download the DK Sportsbook app and use the code BearBets. That's BearBets, two words, B-E-A-R-B-E-T-S. For new customers to get $250 in bonus bets. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. That's 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas. 21 plus age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in New Hampshire, Oregon, and Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co slash football. What's going on? Jeff and I are back. Uh, week three of the college football season. Both of us hit our best bet last week, which was good. Uh, we uh, we didn't bet on rice. Jeff, you were 1,000% uh, correct with uh, what was going to happen in Lincoln, Nebraska, between Colorado and Nebraska. Iowa State got the late win, late field goal, uh, great scenes at Kinnick. The Clones um, moved to 2-0 and as well and got the money. So a good start to the year for us and a uh, good start to the year in the SEC as well with what, six of the top seven in the poll uh, currently SEC teams. How's your week been, brother? It is good. You know, I think the the funnest part about this time of year is sort of piecing through the results and the data to figure out what's real and what's not, right? I mean, a lot of teams have had some great weekends so far, and they play nobody. A lot of teams have had bad weekends and have played nobody. A lot of teams have had, you know, have had medium weekends and played a lot of people bare. So I think we're still finding out a lot about these teams as we head into week three. So it'll be a lot of fun to to, to pick your brain and hear from Sammy and Will and see exactly where we stand with, uh, look, it's not a the best slate of games this weekend, Bear, but there's certainly wagers to be made. No, no, there are plenty of wagers to be made. And I I have a couple that I'll give you my uh my best bet later on the show. But the, the, you, there's one team that you one team that uh, do, do we want to overreact? Do we want to react? Do we know about what do we think? And and it is one of those SEC teams that is not um in the top seven in the in the AP poll. That's Oklahoma. Uh, they were did not look good again last week against Houston. I, I had Houston. Uh, I did not expect the Cougars to have a chance to win the game outright uh, in the fourth quarter like they did. Tulane kind of got screwed by the officiating with the, a bad offensive pass interference call. Uh, very easily could have won that game against Kansas State. Uh, that kid, Darian Mensa, is a hell of a player at quarterback. Uh, I like Tulane. They're getting 13 and a half here. Um, I think John, it's a good situation because if Tulane, after losing that game, hard fought game that they could have won, led most of the day uh, against Kansas State, if they were playing, I, I don't know, Southern Miss this week, I, I'd have my concerns about them having a little bit of a hangover. But the opportunity for John Summerall to rally his troops and be like, hey, we, we, we go to Oklahoma this week. We have an opportunity to just kind of – erase what happened last week and make up for it against an SEC team, I think that's a great opportunity. I, I think Oklahoma's got problems on the offensive line. I think they've got problems at wide receiver. Certainly have seen that. Jackson Earl has not been great. Uh, yeah, I like I like the green wave here, plus 13 and a half. Bear, if you had to guess Oklahoma's yards per play number, where they rank out of 133 through two seasons. Now, they played Temple. They won 51-3. They beat Houston – 1612. What would you guess their yards per play rank is? Oh, it's I'm, I'm gonna say something like uh 102. Close 108. So you're exactly yeah, it, right. It, it, Look, Jackson it hasn't Arnold, been good. No. Like the, the passing game has been non-existent in terms of deep yeah. pass. I think in the opener, I think I think Jackson Arnold had like had like 20 something completions for or like a like whatever it was for yeah. like 145 yards. Like it was losing Farouk is a big deal for that offense. Yeah. And they're just, you know, they're trying to figure it out. Look, Jackson was a first time starter. I think you maybe hope that bears season goes on. You can get better play from him, which I think you can assume you should have, but now yeah. Tulane comes to town. I will say the one thing about the Tulane is that I do 
it's a, that was a big emotional loss last week, a game that they had Kansas State on the ropes. So I do wonder how they come out early in this game. But I think to your point about Oklahoma, they're they're struggling right now. So taking Tulane. Um, Bear, it is a it's a weird week because conference realignment has forced rivalries out west to happen in week three. So we have the Apple Cup and the Civil War, which is shocking to be played in September, Bear. You've been to some of these games. It is raining. It is cold. It is miserable. There's snow on the ground sometimes in the Palouse. There's going to be sunshine this weekend in Seattle and Corvallis. How are we going to watch these games when they're not happening just in late November? B- bizarro world. No, I've been to a, I have not been to an Apple Cup. Game game day did not do a, a show from the Apple Cup, but okay. we did do a game from the 2010 Civil War when Oregon went to Corvallis, won, and then wound up playing yeah. for the uh, for the national title that year and lost that heartbreaker to uh, to Auburn. But yeah. uh, it's it's funny. I'm looking. Did, did you like it? Did you, I, I'm, we'll, we'll talk about the Apple. I mean, the uh, Civil War. I'm yeah. sure in the Gamma Group Chat. Did you like anything in the in the Apple Cup? I like Washington a lot. I've taken them minus the five, which is what you get on on DraftKings right now. Uh, Bear, they're just better. I mean, I know that seems like a like a thing that. Not a great handicap, but if you look at what Jed Fish has done offensively, they have a, a competent quarterback and a really good run game so far. And they've just sort of grinded out yards. They found ways to get creative offense going. And they played better defense than I thought. Remember, guys, they're replacing nearly the entire roster. I, I understand that this has happened other places, but in other places we've seen a little bit of discombobulation early in the season. It has to happen to Washington. You look at Washington State, they just beat Texas Tech at home, but Texas Tech did not have their star running back. Texas Tech outgained them. They had more first downs than them. And Washington State right now offensively is oddly for being sort of a run and shoot, uh, a running team. Uh, so I just think that Washington is a better team. This game is in Seattle. Well, duh. It's in where the Seahawks play. It's not It's not in in, uh, in, in Husky Stadium too. So it's not really maybe the, the home field advantage we see in Husky Stadium. Uh, I like Washington lot in this game. I've seen projections from people that we trust that this game is is near nine or ten points for Washington, yet they're only getting four and a half or five. Well, maybe, maybe Popcorn Guy will make a uh, a return appearance uh, at the Apple Cup in Seattle. We're still looking for Popcorn Guy, that legendary video from a uh, few years ago with the fan in the in, in the rain, just throwing popcorn and landing all over himself. By the way, when you when you said about where where did o- Oklahoma rank and, and you said one away, I immediately clicked over to see like uh, who was like 102 and like and I'm going to scroll on and I see the team that ranks last in the country in yards per play is Wyoming. And Wyoming I'm betting on this week. I took Wyoming plus 11 and a half against BYU. Mm. Uh, it was an ugly turnover filled game against SMU. I think it was more of a an indictment on SMU than it was like BYU being really good. Uh, like they weren't great offensively either. There's six turnovers combined in the game. Uh, yeah. Wyoming, at least with Wyoming, I'm going to take the, the glass half full approach here. Like the season opening loss was at Arizona state and maybe ASU is better than, than we thought. Who knows? We'll find out maybe a little bit more about ASU against Texas state this week. And the other loss for, for Wyoming was against Idaho who I don't had a chance at, at Austin to win that game in the season over and beat the Ducks. So uh, in a game, it's going to expect it to be a little bit of a low scoring, ugly type of game, 11 and a half at home in, in yeah. Wyoming. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to take the old, the old Cowboys against BYU there in a, in, in a hold your nose, ugly type of game. By, by the way, uh, congratulations on you winning your, your ugly hold your nose type of game last week too because how bad was air force on offense in that game well that, that's why i'm i'm on a lot of air force owners this season i i will probably fade them every week they're, they're going to bear this week i, I just watched Baylor play utah so i don't know if, if my bias plays in the hand there but they're Baylor's favorite by about 15 and a half i haven't done anything with that game yet the, the last game bear before we get to some sec talk and game a group chat that we, we will not discuss later uh colorado colorado state is there a bounce back here for the Buffs, they're favored by seven on the road. Colorado State potentially without their best wide receiver that we know lit up Colorado last year. I know Colorado's down some pieces on defense. Shiloh Sanders is out. I think Trevor Woods might be out, or he suspended at least the first half of that game. Um, I I kind of like Colorado. I haven't wagered on this, Bear. I, I might take a piece, a small piece of Colorado here. They're better than Colorado State, no? Got no, I got no... I got no thought on no. this uh, on a, on a play in this game. Uh, all I know is that since Colorado beat Colorado State last year, no Power Four team has a worse record than Colorado's two and nine, yeah. and yeah. the only team that has allowed more points per game in that stretch 
is Stanford, wow. which ironically beat Colorado last year. Wow. The thing with Colorado is just imagine how things could be even worse if they didn't get 10 turnovers in the first three games last year. I know. Uh, against TCU, uh, Colorado State, and Nebraska. Like, they easily could have lost all three of those games. And, and just think of the perception of the program then if they didn't have the miracle uh, fluky 3-0 and start last year and, yeah. and you're, you're looking at a team that that, that legitimately had won two games yeah. um, under, yeah. under Deion Sanders. So, yeah, I got, I got no plan this game. I want no part of Colorado uh, here at, at all. The, the the last thing I'll say about Colorado because I don't know how much we'll touch on them you know throughout the season it certainly depends on on where they you know go with this win or if they win or lose this game is you get everyone's best shot if you're Colorado which is hard to do bear if you don't have the talent to back that up right like Ohio State's gonna get everyone's best shot Georgia everyone's best shot Texas but they have the talent to withstand mm-hmm. getting everyone's best shot right and to, to a degree even my Ducks right you're gonna get Idaho's best shot. Boise State's yep. best shot. And you have the talent to at least, even though it's ugly, you, you, you win that game. Colorado, every game they play from here on out, and they're going to be favored in one more throughout the season. Baylor next week, maybe. That's probably about it, uh, at least right now. Um, maybe Cincinnati we uh, week uh, eight or nine, Bear. But every team, even the teams that are not, quote, unquote, good on your schedule, you're going to get their best shot because you're Colorado. And that's a tough spot to be in when you don't have the depth on the team to play that way each and every week. Yeah, I, I would. Yeah, I think I think you've got that right. Probably favored twice the rest of the way. Uh, probably a small favorite against Baylor next week, and then uh, Cincinnati, who might be the worst team. Yeah. Uh, in, well, we thought they were going to be the worst team in the Big Twelve. Maybe Colorado's the worst team in the Big Twelve. But yeah, no, yeah, no, no, no play for me or in, okay. for me in this game. It was pretty. Apparent early on what way the winds were blowing in that game <laughs> last week. So so good job out of you. Um, big noon kickoff, Alabama at Wisconsin this week. It, it's weird. I didn't come away with a great feeling about Alabama last week. Like if you look at the the SEC, you got like I said, the six teams in the top seven. Uh, Georgia obviously should make the playoff. Texas obviously should make the playoff. Ole Miss there hasn't played anybody. Uh, I feel pretty good about Tennessee at that price make, making the playoff because I, I, I talked about how I'm, not, I'm down on Oklahoma and they have all Alabama at home. I, I think of all the like if you if you had to make a bet, I think Tennessee to make the playoff feels like a pretty darn good bet right now. Yeah, I think that's the bet you would make out of those teams right now if you don't have any money anywhere else, right? Uh, we know Georgia, Texas are, are in for sure. We think Ole Miss. And then, look, I would just say this about Bama Bear is I think they're going to be fine. They have a head coach, Akeelan DeBoer, who's all he's done ever, anywhere is win. Now, they have some tough games, obviously, in their schedule. They need to be 10-2 and two to get in. The question about whether or not Alabama or Tennessee gets in, in my opinion, is more about a 10-2 and two SEC team versus a 10 and two big 10 team like USC right now. And I'm look, I'm not high on USC. I wasn't entering the season. I thought they were eight win team bear. They're probably a 10 win team now, right? 10 and two at, hey. at the floor. If they're 10 and two in the big 10, let's say they lose to Penn state and they get upset in another place and they beat Notre Dame to end the season. Are you taking a 10 and two USC team or 10 and two, nine and three Alabama, Tennessee team? That's what it comes down to, right? As, as far as, you know, it, it, like, so when you start thinking about the playoff odds, you have to start looking, I think, around the country and see sort of who those teams we, who those teams we match up against. If we think that Oregon, Ohio State, Penn State are in for sure, then, you know, is USC that fourth Big Ten team? Does that knock out an SEC team? It does knock out an SEC team. Does it knock out uh, potentially a, a second uh, ACC team? If, if Clemson winds up winning that league and they beat Miami, uh, who has maybe one loss at the time and knocked them out. Like I said, I think the Big 12 we all kind of felt was going to be a one-bid le- bid league, and uh, it probably is looking that way. But, yeah, I, I think five is looking like a, a very likely number uh, for the SEC come uh, come playoff uh, playoff time and selection day. So that's our our thoughts on the, uh, on the SEC briefly. Uh, kicking around here with the – Sammy and Will in the Gambling Group Chat and get their thoughts as well. Gambling Group Chat is back. Myself, Jeff, Sammy P, and Will Hill. And uh, 
before guys, uh, Jeff and I were kicking around some of these SEC teams to to make the playoff or uh, even win the SEC. And, and I kind of wonder right now, uh, is there maybe more confidence that Tennessee might be either in the SEC championship game or make the playoff uh, than, say, Alabama? Sam, you have any thoughts on that? I'm higher on Bama, and obviously the market is too, minus 175 at DraftKings. So that sort of tells you a story, and I don't think Alabama is going to lose at Wisconsin this weekend, which I know we'll talk about coming up. But there are some games that I have some concerns with Tennessee in. When they go to Oklahoma on the 21st, can they hang around there? You know, that's a game where they're probably going to be about a seven-point dog, at least in my true numbers. So that's a game I have issues with. On the 19th of October, Tennessee's got to play Alabama. They're going to be dogs in that game. And then on the 16th of November, they go to Georgia. And Georgia's going to be at least a two-touchdown favorite. So if the numbers play out correctly, I've got Tennessee with three losses, at which point you have that conversation. How many three-loss SEC teams are going to make the playoff? And I don't know. I don't know that I'm there with Tennessee, and I, I certainly am not there with Missouri yet either because we haven't seen them play anybody. But we know it's going to be Georgia, Texas, Ole Miss, Alabama at minimum. Like that's a good starting point, at least for me right now in the playoff. Yeah, I think we do these shows and we agree a lot. We think a lot. We read a lot of the same things. I am completely oppo on Sammy. I'm all in on this Tennessee team. I love the quarterback. I love the front four defensively. They got a quarterback, who, a coach who can scheme offense. And that schedule is not as bad as it looked a week ago because I think Oklahoma, boy, that flew under the radar. What a horrible performance that was against Houston, who was life and death with Oklahoma. They could have easily beaten Oklahoma. They outgained them uh, in, in that game. Look, if I can get seven right now with Tennessee in that game, I'll take it. I, I think that they are very live in that game. And then they host Alabama. They at least get that game against Alabama in their building. And again, I think and we'll get to ago. Alabama, Wisconsin here. Uh, in, in a minute, I think they have some holes in the secondary, the offensive line. Uh, that game's going to be in Tennessee again. So I uh, think uh, you're, you're probably not going to win at Georgia, but I really just like the combination quarterback, front four defensively. They have some monster players. Pierce is going to be a top five pick. Um, and uh, the schedule's not as bad. I think to this Tennessee team, I think it's a 12 to one to make, to win the conference. Now you're probably not going to win it, but if you can find odds to like make the conference title game at like three, four to one, I think that might be a better way to go bear. Yeah, I, I, I'm I'm with you on Tennessee, and I, I think in talking to some of our uh, people, uh, whether it's been uh, Joel Clad or, or Urban Meyer, who's like broken down some of the Alabama stuff and watched the the USF game, I, I think they have a little bit of concern potentially uh, about the Alabama offense and just the the transition uh, that Milrow has had to make and maybe making trying to make him uh, more of a, a passer than more of a, a, a dual threat. So we, we, we'll see if they can continue again. Again, I, like, like Sammy said, we don't expect them to lose this week, but, but I think moving forward, I actually saw Alabama under nine and a half wins I like that. money out there, which uh, I actually did grab. I mean, nine and three is not beyond uh question for Alabama because uh, Georgia, you're probably going to lose the game at Tennessee. I think it's very losable. And, th and then you have uh, the game at LSU and maybe Oklahoma is better by the end of the year. Maybe, maybe they do happen to uh, trip up and, and then maybe Auburn in the, in the Rathbury game. So it, it plus money. I, I thought maybe Alabama under nine and a half was, uh, was worth a look, but th this week, it, the Saturday slate isn't necessarily super, but we got a couple of really good uh, early week games. Yeah. Thursday and, fr and Friday, Will, I know you're really high on Texas State. Uh, they're a two-point dog at Arizona State. The only thing I worry about here is off of that big win uh, last week against UTSA, uh, I, can they get up again? Because if they win this game, uh, you, you're, you're bet about them to potentially make the college football playoff and, and even still be a player, obviously, in the Sun Belt, win or lose. But massive game uh, in terms of respect for uh, for the Bobcats this week. Yeah, it is. But I don't know if you're Texas State, if you can be in a position where you overlook somebody or especially when you have a good coach, I think they have some of the ingredients to avoid a letdown in, in that this is a standalone game. It's a power five opponent. I don't know. Like, look, it's not a, they're not Georgia, so they're not, they're not going to take anybody lightly and they're not going to, I don't think, uh, be in a position where a primetime game against an Arizona State team is going to be something they overlook. 
interesting matchup. Arizona State. It's a weird box score if you look at the the game last week against Mississippi State because they you know put up a lot of points. They won, but they only had I think sixty eight yards passing. They were really run one dimensional in terms of running the ball. Texas State has some really good players up front defensively, and they've got a good quarterback, a good coach again, and, and GJ Kinney, who man, uh, he is not going to be there for long. I mean, we could sit here and float where, where he's going to go, but uh, he's got bigger things in his future, unfortunately for Texas State. You just you know that's that's one of those things where you, you get a coach that good, it's just a matter of time. I mean, how long you're going to keep them? But I like Texas State uh, plus the one and a half, plus the two. Uh, you know, probably just better off taking the uh, the money line here. I think they win the game. Jeff, I know you. We were kind of kind of down on Arizona State at yeah. the start of the year. Anything that you've seen from the Sun Devils to even though they are two and zero to kind of take you off the uh, the scent there, and maybe uh, maybe maybe this was one that you might want to have back in, in betting a season win total under on them. Uh, I'm not changing my, my win total uh, wager on them. I do like Texas State in this game. Look, Arizona State's going on the road for the first time, right? They're very one-dimensional offensively. Scadaboo's been incredible, which he was last season as well. But now they're on the road on a short week. As you mentioned, Texas State has circled this game now. This is, if you read their, the, the media there and, 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 and the fans, are like this is the biggest game they've had in years. On a Thursday night, national television, here comes a, a Big 12 team to town. So they've been preparing all sort of offseason for this game. Arizona State's offense started fast game one, slowed down a little bit, started fast game two, slowed down a little bit. Now they're on the road and they can't throw the football guys uh, as well as I'd like for a team going on the road. I don't think you can just run the ball on Texas State and get away with a win in this, in you know, playing that game style. So I like Texas State to win this game. I don't, I think we're all in agreement on, you know, Texas State and, and their capabilities if they, if they pull off this win. So somebody somewhere is going to watch this show or listen to this show and go, "Uh oh, they're all on Texas State." <laughs> Got to take Arizona State because uh, I do that when I watch TV. I'm like, "Oh, that team is definitely going to lose now." <laughs> um, look, all I'll say is this: this number opened three, and the sharps came in right away and took three. They took three. They took two and a half. They took two, and now it's down to one at a couple shops. I mean, your best point to take Texas State was. Maybe a couple of days ago, that's not going to keep me off the side. I like the over, to be honest with you. We've seen this tick up a little bit, 58 and a half on the open to 59 and a half, 60. I like points. I mean, the Big 12 clearly doesn't stop anybody. We're going to watch a lot of games this year where they can't tackle, have no luck on the back end, keeping teams out of the end zone. So that's going to be probably where I'll end up on Thursday. And I'll probably take the over. And you mentioned their head coach at Texas State. Well, I'm actually down here in Florida right now. Wouldn't he look good as the next coach of the wow. Gators? Wouldn't he be great in Florida? Coaching the Florida Gators when they finally whack Billy Napier? We know that's coming. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that'll that be interesting because I, I know um, that'll that'll be a highly sought-after job if the Gators do continue to to move on. I, 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 know, I know someone who actually lives in Tulsa who's associated with that that program and that fan base. And I know they were very, very, very upset uh, when Kenny was passed over and, and they hired Kevin Walson because Kenny yeah. uh, did such a good job as a quarterback uh, at Tulsa. They thought they would just bringing him in would be a natural. And uh, I know they were disappointed to see uh, Kenny not get the job, but um, I'm sure they're happy that he is doing well somewhere else. Let's do a little quick sports talk radio. If you had your choice of Lane Kiffin or GJ Kenny, which direction did you go if you're Florida? You're going to go Lane Kiffin. Lane just Kiffin. Yeah, I, I agree. SEC and but uh, that's one of those, maybe, maybe it's the the second choice of uh, the, the obvious choice might not be the better choice, but I, I think Lane is the obvious candidate if that job does uh, indeed open up. But Sammy, you mentioned uh, points in the Big Twelve and nobody stopping anybody. Uh, we got another game this week: Arizona State, K State at Arizona State, uh, Arizona rather uh, at Kansas State. Cats are. The Arizona State. No, I'm saying it wrong. I'm confusing myself. Well, it's now. a non-conference it's game. That's why it's it's non-conference game, Barry. Correct. You're, exactly. you're confused. You're confused. Yeah. They into the league. But but yeah, K State seven and a half point favorite at home in the non-conference game against the new conference opponent Arizona. Uh, <laughs> Sammy, do, do, do we like a lot of points here? Fifty nine the, the total. So Arizona Tech's playing Kansas West. Yeah, is that what is that Kansas what we're United, at? Yes. Exactly. I'm so confused. I like the over. I made this total sixty five. So the fact that it's, you know, still sitting in that range where it's not quite 60 yet at a couple shops, I don't mean to come on your show, Bear, and say, oh, I like the over at every game. But Arizona. Favorite over Sammy. That's what I hear. That's what I hear. Well, I, Texas State's <laughs> small dog. Um, I'm not I'm not laying points with Kansas State. I've said this for years. I love Kansas State. 
when they were, you know, they, they were at home in the little apple, Oklahoma's rolling to town. K state's getting six and a half. You sprinkle the money line. But the problem is that all the good teams are out of the conference. They're the favorite every week. So it's a huge reversal of roles. I am not laying seven and a half with Kansas state. That's a team that I just, I love them so much when they're getting points, but those opportunities are few and far between now who's stopping McMillan. Well, can, are they going to triple team him in this game and, and still not maybe touch him? I mean, that's a guy, I, I think when we look at the NFL draft markets in a couple of months, we're going to see McMillan as one of those guys, first wide receiver taken. I think that number is going to run once they open that market, but I see fireworks in Kansas State this uh, this Friday night. Yeah, I wish I could add something to be a little contrarian or different, but I'm with you guys. I, I do worry. Like, I don't think – I know Avery Johnson's a lot of people's uh, sleeper for Heisman. I don't think he throws it well enough. I don't think he throws it well at all. But that being said, I think he could probably just line up and run it against Arizona, and Arizona's got the the weapons, the answers to, uh, to, to straight punches. Arizona, to me, is going to be an over team because they're good enough on offense and they're not very good on defense. And if you can see an adjusted win total, I don't know if there's been one post on Arizona. I know, Barry, you, uh, you have the under, and you gave that out from beginning of the season. To me, there's some trouble there because they're just not good enough defensively. It's Fafita. It's McMillan. It's not a lot else. They really are missing that coaching staff, that move on, fishing company. So to me, uh, this is an over in Arizona is a team that I'm looking to fade the rest of the season. I, I will just say from last week, I would not look at the NAU performance and think that's going to happen this weekend. That's a prime letdown spot. You're facing a team that you've been over the years, many, many times after a big win, we score 61 points the week before, and you know, you're going on the road to play Kansas state. Arizona was Oh, for 10 on third down against NAU. Oh, for like, like, like drastically, like seriously bad. I, w- I would not think they're going to have that performance this weekend. I'm with you guys on the amount of points scoring in this game. If I'm getting seven and a half, still, it feels like, a wager to make. I would not take Kansas State. I would not look at any of these teams to play defense in this game. Will, you mentioned it's, it's, a, it's a good point. The defensive staff Arizona had last season has left, and they made a huge improvement in year three under Jed Fish. They're all they're all gone. They went to Texas and kind of scattered all over the place. So this defense is not the same, right? It was 39 points they allowed in week one to Wyoming, which is uh, way too many points. Not Wyoming. They, uh, that was uh, ASU. New Mexico, which is way too many points for uh, a, a Lobos team that, that should not score that much at Arizona. Yeah, and, and that was one of the reasons why I did like uh, the the under in addition to hearing about these reports about McMillan maybe missing most of the year with a foot injury. Obviously, that did not uh, come to fruition, and that information was uh, garbage, as, as they say in the industry. But, yeah, you you hit on it, Jeff. Like, they lost, I think, like seven of their top eight defensive linemen in that rotation. Yep. And, at, and, it, and it's shown, like, I might look at a Kansas State team total over uh, when, when those get posted later in the week. Because right now on Wednesday, I don't see anything up. But, uh, yeah, I, I think they're going to have a, a hard time stopping Giddens and, uh, and and Johnson when they when they run the ball on the ground. So, yeah, we're all kind of seeing the same type of thing here. Uh, and Sam alluded to it before. Uh, I guess the, the big one of the bigger games on Saturday, obviously the big noon game, Alabama laying – 15 and a half against Wisconsin. And that will be the, one of the questions in the, uh, the super six power by DraftKings uh, later in the week, I'll call them up uh, with all these super six questions, your opportunity to uh, win some, some cash for free. And one of those questions are going to be Alabama uh, minus 15 and a half against Wisconsin. Uh, what do you think the result of the game will be? Jeff, what do you think the result of the game will be? You're you're laying it or taking it in Madison. Um, I, I'm laying it, but I, I think the best way to wager in this game is to take Alabama live at some point. I, I feel like this game is going to start slow for both teams, right? Alabama, as we mentioned a little bit earlier, offensively, they're going to be okay, but Kalen DeBoer has to figure out how to use Milwaukee, right? Like he's not had a quarterback like this in offense before, you know, Michael Penix never moved. And we know that Milrow's best capability right now is to throw the ball as far as he can, but also run, right? He, he can move and they're trying to figure out sort of how to use him. They have some offensive line question marks, especially on, on that right side. And they're on the road for the first time. Wisconsin guys can't really score, right? They play decent enough defense. So I think as this game goes on, there's going to be a certain point where the number comes down for Bama and you take them because I think the second half of this game, their talent and their coaching and just having better football players will take over once Wisconsin can't score enough points, guys. So for, so for me, Will, I'm looking at sort of a, a, a live number to get Bama at a, at a better price. 
Yeah, I'm looking for Wisconsin. It's kind of in between these key numbers of 14 and 17. It's closer to 17 now at 16. So, again, I, I think live might be a good idea no matter who you like because if Alabama gets the ball first and they get a couple first downs, you're going to see a 17, 17 and a half. 17 is kind of my uh, my buy point here with, uh, with Wisconsin. I just – Man, I, I watched some of the Bama South Florida game. The South Florida game, but, uh, coach, by the way, what are you doing kicking a field goal? You had a chance to tie the game. It's house money. They kicked the field goal. You know what happened? Bama runs away with the game. That was not an impressive performance. Offensive line, secondary, uh, the quarterback. There's just this is not vintage Bama. It's it's uh, obviously a transition with the coach who DeBoer is like a home run hire. They're going to be great long run. That that's a good hire, but. Um, I don't know that this is a, a Wisconsin team that can explode, uh, expose those flaws. I, I kind of wish it was, uh, you know, an old school Wisconsin team where they were just ground and pound and, and grind the clock. They've kind of been a hybrid now where they're an air raid team and they're not really a running team, not really a passing team. It's a weird Wisconsin team, but I, I'd only look towards taking the points here with, uh, with whiskey. Let me raise that field goal that you just brought up and let me match you or maybe raise you with the Michigan field goal when they were down 24 <laughs> to three. I'm in the book in Vegas. Like, Oh yeah. Huge field goal. There is 24 to three. Now it's 24 to six. Woo! Woo! We're back. Nice pick nerd. Are the, are these like, what are these coaches thinking? Honestly, like if, if you would have told Alex goal, it was not long enough bear. The show's not long enough. If we want to, I, I, you, you, Alex, you, you say to Alex goal, it's really game. You, you're going to have the ball, the Alabama four yard line, fourth and goal with an yeah. opportunity mm -hmm. to tie the game in, in, in or give yourself a, t a chance to win the game. One play from the four, you would take it a hundred out of a hundred times. And he goes and kicks a field goal. Like, what are you scared. doing? And then they're scared, Bear. They're scared. They're scared, right? They're scared. And and look, here's I think I think some of the 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 psychology behind it at times is getting points feels good, no matter if it's three or seven. I'm not specifically talking about the the South Florida, but Colorado did the same thing. He was down four scores and get the field goal to go down four scores. Same as Michigan, right? Sammy, you're down three scores, you get a field goal, you're still down three scores. Um, but it just feels good. To score points, like if you drive the ball down the field and you're struggling to move the ball and you end with three, you feel like you've accomplished something, even though it might mean nothing. That's why coaches do it. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I've been in, in, in that situation before. I've been down 27 nothing in the fourth quarter of a game and we got three points. And we're like, yeah, we got the three. Like you, 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 something, just, 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 out. just something like to feel good about. And so I think at times that's how coaches approach those situations. Now, again, the South Florida coach should go for it. I am team aggressive i'm team go for it i'm especially when you are playing a game where you are a big underdog um kicking field goals as an underdog when you're close in a game feels like a waste of time and what surprises me is that he he comes from josh heupel staff at tennessee and and he's one of the most run it up go for it every like like he's one of the more aggressive guys out there so you, you would think that that he that he would have followed it that model there and had an opportunity to maybe win a game on the road that not a lot of people thought they'd have an opportunity. And so, yeah, I'm probably going to look towards uh, maybe a Wisconsin team total under here, maybe in game and under here as well. Uh, again, I, I don't think Wisconsin is going to score very many points. I would be a little concerned uh, about maybe a, a pick six or a non offensive touchdown from uh, Alabama here, being that I don't trust Tyler Van Dyke at quarterback to either turn the ball over on a, on, on a sack and a fumble or a, a, a pick six. But you're, you're right. You're right, uh, Sammy, about this ground and pound. Like, they, Wisconsin does not have an elite back. They do not have an elite offensive line. They do not have an elite quarterback. And right now, like, for Longo's offense, it's just not – what he had in North Carolina with with those types of players and spreading them around, like he doesn't have that right now at Wisconsin. They don't have those types of players. So while in in theory that running that type of offense is great, but in reality, not having the weapons to be able to make that offense work, uh, yeah, I'm 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 a fade of Wisconsin here as long as I I can do it uh, at least in terms. Of the uh, of the the uh, the team total here, so that that's a game uh, at noon on Saturday. Not two ranked teams. The only game featuring two ranked teams on Saturday: <laughs> Boston College at Missouri. Missouri around a 16, 16 and a half point favorite. Sam, we mentioned before, we really don't know how good Missouri is here. Do do we? I always have every week I try and guess like who the underdog with please is going to be like, like the dog that everyone's going to, everyone's going to be on and have an opportunity to win or pull an upset or keep it close. I kind of feel like 
that, 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 that BC at Missouri game has a kind of a little underdog with fleas just because BC already pulled uh, one of those upsets at Florida State. Sure. You're seeing money come in on Missouri too early this week. I mean, this opened like 15, 15 and a half, and now we're to 17 on a Wednesday. I mean, that's a pretty strong move. I don't have to tell you guys that that's respected money to get that to 17, but how far does it run? You know, if it gets to 17 and a half, do we see that buyback? Like this is probably not going to run to 20. That would be pretty crazy. And I think, you know, the one thing about these underdogs with fleas, and maybe it is one, they are so much better coached right now with bill o'brien oh, i mean yeah. like what 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 he's doing with this quarterback and what jeff halfley was trying to do last year when he was the head coach i mean to go from a defensive coach to an offensive coach is sort of modern football in 2024 that's what you want that's why i still don't think robert sala is long for the jets but that's a different conversation <laughs> you need offensive flexibility how to, how to wedge that in there sammy didn't you? i just I had four and a half. Good. It was not fun. It was not fun. Um, At least you got I, beat bad and you got beat early. You, you knew right away. I didn't bet the game. I did not take Boston College, but I would think about it if this continued to run. If I could get 18, 18 and a half, I would be there because I feel like that quarterback and their schematics are, are going to keep them around, if that makes any sense. So we also haven't seen Missouri play anybody yet. So we don't know how good Missouri's defense is. Yeah, and we don't know how good Missouri's defense is because they just got so many backup quarterbacks last year. You think of the bowl game, and you think of Florida. You just go down the line. They, they really got fortunate. Um, and, and I'm with Sammy. I don't want to fade O'Brien. 17 is kind of the point here where maybe I'd be interested in BC, but uh, not a game I bet. It is very strange. I, I did a double take too, Bear, where you look at the uh, the matchups, you see 24 versus six, like you know Boston College in Missouri. It's, it's almost like, uh, I don't know, mid-90s college basketball to think these both teams are ranked at the same time. It's uh, v- very, very odd. I think yeah, with where, Missouri, where's, where's Derek Chevious and Billy Curley? Yeah, exactly. I, I think with Missouri, you have to wait because they they haven't they've allowed zero points this year, and they played two offenses that would score zero points Buffalo against the four of us. State. Like I think you have to wait on this game. You have to just wait on Missouri. Sammy's point about Boston College's quarterback is going because his he is athletic enough and explosive enough to keep them in a game like this, where it just he takes over with his athletic ability and just makes plays to keep this game closer than, than, than it possibly should be. If they're playing like a static quarterback or statue back there that, you know, I didn't really think was able to create plays like that. Maybe I'll leave Missouri, but I think it's a stay away for now. Cause we don't know what Missouri is. What, what's Oregon, Jeff? Do we know what they are? Uh, no, I have a feeling. I hope I have a feeling. I hope I'm right about the game this weekend. This number, by the way, got to 13 and a half on Sunday. I took Oregon minus 13 and a half. It's now back up to 16 or 16 and a half, 17. Um, it opened, I think the look at it was 20, got immediately hammered down. Oregon is a talented football team with talented players, but you are what your film says you are. And they are a mistake prone team. They make too many freaking mistakes. They can't even hold on the football as you cross the goal line and kick off return touchdown. So if they can just eliminate the mistakes, like just do your job, as Bill Belichick has always said, just do your job. They're going to win this game by four touchdowns. The problem is, I don't know if they're going to do their job. I will give you one, one, one slimmer of hope. I think this is the reason why I bet on Oregon. I think they're going to win this game and win it by a lot. They've had offensive line issues, guys. In the middle of this game, throughout this game, they switched offensive lines around. It was much better once the sort of the veteran, older offensive line was able to play. Some of that's injury-related. I think if they start with this line, which I, I think they're going to do this weekend, from the start, Gabriel will have a better week of practice and we'll be fine. The, the Beavers guys, I don't think, can score in this game. They've only, I think, attempted 40 passes in two games, San Diego State and, 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 and Idaho State. I just don't think that you can run the ball, uh, you know, 25, 30 times with their offensive line. They, they don't have Genty. It's it's not what uh, what uh, Boise State could do. Give give us one give give us one story for from your uh, your times in the Civil War. Give us give us one story. It could be anything related with any of well, the Civil War games you played. Well, we did. We were the first, I think, to do the uh, come out uh, for warms in one color and then come back in, change your jersey, and come back out in a different color. In two thousand five, we we warmed up in yellow uniforms. Went back inside, changed. It came out in the Bilotti Bold uniforms. Those were some great. They, they didn't look great. Terrible in 2005. That game was played in, in such a heavy fog 
that our coaches had to come down from the booth. They could not see the game in the second half from where they were sitting up up high, up top. The, the fog was was too dense. So it was a fog bowl. We won by three or four touchdowns, and we wore brand-new uniforms. Other, that's the only time we beat them. We're, we were one in, we were one in three against Oregon State. For 10 straight years, the rivalry was the home team won. And then 07, we had our fifth-string quarterback after we were going to go to the championship game that year, and Dennis was going to win the Heisman, we played the Civil War with our four-string quarterback who got concussed, and then our fifth-string quarterback, a walk-on, true freshman, took over, and it was a little bit rough in that game. So not the best memories, but uh, always close games with the Beavers. Will, any uh, any bet here in Civil War? No, I would probably look to lay it. I think one of these weeks, Oregon's going to get back on track. Certainly concerned about the offensive line and just big picture. Like, is this a team that's on the, the same level as the Georgia and Ohio States as we maybe thought before the season? And I would love to see that 2005 footage of Jeff after the game, what kind of party there was, what kind of activities took place afterwards. I don't know if that footage is out there anywhere. Probably not, unfortunately. Uh, I, I'm I'm sure it was PG-13. Will, 2005. And I was I was 19, so I was not allowed to do anything but go back to my room um, sure. and just sure. relax by myself and watch and watch football or sports or movies. That's probably what I did. I just went home by okay. myself, Sammy. I'm picturing you with like a fruit by the loop, you know, like one of those <laughs> just eating the fruit by the loop with your feet on hanging off the bed. Uh Dude, what's with the line though? It has to really bother you because you're an Oregon offensive lineman, and it's, that is a weakness right now. That's yeah. got to drive you insane. Well, look, um, one one guy unfortunately can really hamper it. We're seeing that, by the way, with Alabama's right tackle situation. Right, Proctor's out right now. He got hurt in warm-ups of week one, and they just don't have someone to replace him that's good enough. And, and the Alabama's struggling. Oregon has a problem inside, and you know what what happens with it is a pet peeve of mine all through the sport, college, and the NFL is when one guy gets hurt, right, then you move multiple guys around to fix the problem instead of just inserting one guy. So, you know, if it's a one-for-one trade, you often can can figure it out, right, because you can help that one player. But what happened with Oregon is they, their, their right guard went out, so they moved their center to right guard, and the right he's not a right guard. He's 6'2", 330 pounds. He ain't a right guard. So now the right guard's not as good. Our center's not as good because the backup is in. And when they put everyone back where they should be, we've been better. So I think we're going to be fine this week. There's the guys, football and sports and life, a lot about success is confidence, right? And Oregon's offense doesn't look very confident right now. And part of that, and the way I think it is, is in practice, they're not doing very well because they have a group up front that can't, our defense line's really good. They probably aren't blocking our defense line in practice. With, I think, a better offensive line, all we can practice, we say a, a more confident Dylan Gabriel. Uh, and I'm with you, Will, by the way. I don't think Oregon's nearly as good as Georgia, Texas, Ohio State right now. Luckily for them, they get Oregon State, UCLA, and Michigan State before Ohio. They, they have three more preseason weeks before Ohio State comes. So hopefully we can figure it out in the next month. Yeah, speaking of uh, lack of confidence and, and poor execution on offense, uh, what was that from Notre Dame on Saturday? Like like Riley Leonard, the, 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 their offensive line looked like a mess. Four touchdown underdog, losing at home to, to Northern Illinois. And, and now you're going on the road at Purdue, laying double digits. Uh, Sam, you, you, you want any part of Notre Dame this week? Ten on the road against what might be the worst team in the Big Ten, but you just lost to Northern Illinois in your home field. I think I'm good with Notre Dame. I don't know if you guys saw it on Twitter. I was sitting next to my boss at the new joint, Beck UL, and he's like, what are you doing over there? Because I, I was like, Jeff. I was just like licking my lips, <laughs> placing a bet. And I bet Northern live at 10 to one on the money line in the first quarter. So that was nice. But the problem is I tried to bet a lot more and I got the wheel and they're like, we'll give you 200. So I, <laughs> what do you always say, Bear? You know, I feel like I lost a little bit more. The less you bet, the more you lose when you win. I tried to bet 500 to win 5,000. They didn't take anywhere near that. So that, but that was a nice little Saturday surprise, even though the refs tried to give Notre Dame oh, yeah, they did. every call that at the end. No bet here. And also, Will, no bet on the Irish to make the playoff. That's a common conversation this week. Well, it's three to one now. <laughs> they got to run the table. They got to run the table. They got to go 11 and one. And I just, with that coach, they always lose these games they shouldn't lose. You know, we were talking about maybe they'll lose to Louisville. Maybe they'll lose to USC. They just lost to Northern Illinois. Do we really believe that we should bet them three to one to go 10 and 0? Not me. Not me. 
nor I'd be shocked if they lost to Purdue. I mean, they just, I, you can't lay double digits with a team. They, they can't protect the quarterback. Uh, Leonard got hit a million times in that game. And you think about that game. That's concerning. If you're Notre Dame, you watch that. It didn't feel like a fluke. It didn't feel like it was luck. I feel like Northern Illinois was, you know, just as good as them and, and outplayed them pretty thoroughly and uh, laying 10 with a team that again, can't protect the quarterback. Can't really make explosive plays or throw down the field. That's just, it's hard to cover a number with just a running game. Uh, I'll take Purdue. And I, I wouldn't be surprised, you know, tied with five or six minutes to go. And, and I was on Northern Illinois last week. You guys should have told me, hey, take the money line. That, that's your fault for not for not telling me that. Uh, but I, look, I'm, I'm fading Notre Dame again here. Uh, miss, miss, miss that text. I, I, text. Take I was no, wasted. He, Give me a break. Uh, <laughs> Sammy did make sure to text us after the game, though. He just texted us 10 to 1 NI, uh, NIU. That's all he texted us. That was, that's the only thing he said to us. Um, look, I, Sammy. I, Okay, go ahead, I'll just say I'll just say this: the, the way Notre Dame Illinois won that game is not the way Purdue has to win this game. So, like, that's my only thing. I'm not betting Notre Dame, but I'm just saying, like, if you know Purdue's going to get into a, they, they do throw the ball well. They're off a bye too, by the way. There's a lot of early buys with the yeah. new schedule format. It's kind of funky to like, you know, there's teams I look at like, oh, the teams I'm playing this weekend, I wanted to wager on them. Um, so just just be careful that they're they're not going to play Notre Dame in the way that Northern Illinois can play Notre Dame. So that's my only thing, and and. Marcus Freeman has had these bad losses. They have played better the week after the bad loss. So just be careful, just blindly wager on Purdue this weekend. Sammy, what about the movement in the, the TCU-UCF number? Like TCU opened up as a favorite. This number is swung all the way around to UCF now. Uh, my minus two and a lot of two, two and a half and a lot of spots. I love the Knights, but we gave it, we gave them out to win the Big 12 before the year, but now you're on the right. I'm not sure how good TCU is, but wow, that's a uh, a lot of weight of the market swinging over to the Knights here. Well, and you're seeing a total that's slowly crawling up a little bit too, you know, 62, which is a lot of points in a college football game, at least for a total. Like it's not a lot in the box score, but it's that's a pretty big total. You rarely see totals in the 70s. So 62 is only a touchdown away from getting there. Um, I, I don't know that I would lay two and I hate, we talked about this on the show this morning too. I just hate laying two and a half in football games. It's like my least favorite number to lay. I hate laying one and a half in college basketball and I hate laying two and a half in football games, mm -hmm. but a lot of money, a lot of money on the nights here. And, uh, that's, I mean, look, a move through zero isn't as strong as a, a five point move from eight to three, but Clearly some respect for the Knights. I didn't do anything with it, but I do respect the move for sure. Yeah, yeah no, I haven't no. bet it yet. I, I would look towards UCF just because of the coach quarterback combo. And I look, I, I watched that TCU Stanford game. They made so many mistakes. TCU did penalty after penalty. And he just, uh, that, that is a recipe for getting B. And this is a kind of a big swing game now in terms of the big 12, especially with rising beat up and who knows how healthy he is. And when he comes back, if he comes back, we're going to, it's almost uh you know, a, a repeat of last year of the, the cam rising watch with, uh, with Utah. But uh, I think this is a time. And if you like UCF in this game, maybe you jump on them now, if you haven't yet to, uh, to win the big 12. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm glad you said that Sammy, because, uh, and uh, we brought it up here as well about like laying two and a half uh, and how, how like the, the immediate thought is to lay two and a half. But we you and I both know Chris Andrews very well. Like Chris, he even said to me, like it's counterintuitive, but it's like, Often taking two and a half is like better than laying two and a half because it's it's not what you automatically your mind automatically triggers you to do. So yeah, yeah, I I think you're right with that. Um, I certainly would not want to play UCF right here laying laying two and a half when I when I know I would have had the opportunity earlier in the week to to get them at a better number. It, it's weird too, uh, Jeff. We saw last week uh, Cam Rising get hurt. Yeah, in, in in that game, the market this game went open to twenty two. It's down to twenty. I think the total was forty seven and a half. It's down to forty four and a half. The market certainly is reacting and acting like Rising isn't playing this week. I would not expect Rising to play. We'll, we'll discuss this in a few minutes as for one of my wagers this week. Um, I just don't expect him to play. Um, why? Why? It, look, if you can't beat Utah State on the road. Um, by a point, obviously, you just need to be by a point uh, with your backup quarterback. And Wilson has struggled as a true freshman. I mean, no surprise there. But um, Utah State just scored zero points at USC, guys. Like, Utah can win this game 10-7. to 7. They, they don't care. As long as you get ready for Oklahoma State the following weekend. Um, I, I've been assured, 
um, that it's not a season ending injury, guys. Not like you know last year. He's coming back. He's coming back. Which, by the way, we were on that early on that he wasn't coming back. Um, so yeah. I feel very comfortable that he will play against Oklahoma State. Uh, but I would not expect him to play. Or if he does play this weekend, I mean, it's two drives and th- or three drives, and and that's it. Like he's not going to be out there for a while. Yeah, there's really no need to play him with with that game at uh, at Oklahoma State. Uh, next week, and another game, uh, Sammy, which we're hearing maybe some some rumblings of a uh, quarterback injury. Virginia Tech, uh, I think, is up to fifteen now. Uh, at Old Dominion, ODU might have some uh, some issues at quarterback. Just kind of ro- low level rumblings about a potential injury there. Yeah, that's probably not going to be a spot where we're going to get a lot of good information out of Old Dominion. I don't know a lot of people down there. Maybe uh, maybe you were there and like. 2003 for game day bear. But I doubt <laughs> who knows, who knows like, Ricky Ronnie really well. Ricky Ronnie used to be the OC at Penn state. So we got to find a, a Penn state guy. Um, but the name that I'm hearing is, is the quarterback Grant Wilson. Um, I'm hearing questionable right now and he's not on the injury list. If you pull up the Don best screen, cam rising is on the list. It says questionable. There's, there's nothing on Grant Wilson who actually began his, college career at Fordham. Remember we were betting Fordham overs a couple of years ago. He was one of the quarterbacks on that team. So if he doesn't play, they're going to go to the red shirt freshman Colton Joseph on a very, very short window against a very good football team in Virginia tech. So that number has, has already crossed through the 14. You said you laid it bear. Good on you. I mean, the 14s are all gone out to 15 if Old Dominion has to take on Virginia Tech with a redshirt freshman, that could get ugly, and it's very possible. I'd say 50-50 uh, on the starter for them, Wilson. Yeah, for me, it'd be under or, or, or nothing because, I don't know, Virginia Tech was a team. Uh, a lot of people were high on this offseason. They were kind of a sleeper team for the ACC, and a lot of these ACC teams have been very disappointing. That offense has not looked good, even against Marshall, a team last week where you're going, all right, maybe they get back on track. It wasn't pretty last week, uh, so maybe maybe an under is the, the way to go here instead of laying the bad number here with, uh, with Vatek. Yeah, and let me just correct myself. I said a very good team on Virginia Tech. I mean, I still have them two touchdowns better than an average team. Yeah. They're not a great team, but you know, in my numbers, a hundred is an average team and I've got them at 114. So when I say a very good team, like that's relative to the average team, this, this is not, you know, this isn't Northwestern or Duke. Like this is a much better team How fun was at that Virginia last Tech. Year? Shots fired. Jeez. That, 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 that was a fun, a fun game to watch. I can't, I can't wait for November when they got some games there on that stadium on, on, on the lake. It's going to be awesome. To, to see how did teams you, react to that point Bear, did, did you see the story, by the way, that, they, that they're actually making more money this season at the stadium, the temporary stadium, than the regular stadium because they have more luxury boxes at the 15,000-seat stadium? So they're actually making more revenue on ticket sales at a 15,000-seat stadium than they are at their full-size stadium that's being renovated. Yeah, and, and I'm sure like the naming rights on the stadium probably had a lot to do with that uh, as well. But, hey, they are capitalizing on a – on a weird situation. So good for them for, for doing it. Uh, Will, give us a, a dealer choice here. Give us a, give us one game that we haven't talked about that you, uh, that you're, that you're out to trot this week. How about another weekday game, another weeknight game, uh, UNLV plus seven. Uh, I know that Kansas staff is, has been a staff. We've been afraid to fade, but look, Ant- A- uh, Andy Colton, Nicky matters. We saw it last week. That offense was very choppy in a loss to Illinois. Daniels threw some picks. And if you you can make Daniels a pocket passer, I think that was Illinois' game plan. Uh, he, that, that's not the same team. Kansas doesn't have the home field advantage because they're either playing their home games at a soccer stadium or Arrowhead, which is not the same as being on campus. And UNLV, that's another uh, a really good coaching staff with Barry Odom and uh, a team that I'm, I, I think is still underrated. And you look back at that demolishing of Houston week one, that looks even better with how Houston played against Oklahoma. I'll take UNLV. Give me the Rebs plus seven. And I'm gonna take the point to interject before I get to Sammy to ask him the same question. I'm gonna I'm gonna give Sammy the 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 the, vir- the virtual pat on the back here for kind of bringing that up last week about how KU might have been better with Jason Bean yeah. at quarterback that the offense may have suited him a little bit better and they might not be uh, as explosive or fast tempo uh, w- with Daniels back there. So early returns seem to uh, indicate that you might be onto something there for the. Uh, the boys to learn from Lawrence. So congratulations on your, uh, your, your, your thought there kind of bearing out uh, what game haven't we talked about that you, uh, that you like this week. 
Well, I mean, Will's right. It's a combination of the quarterback in the NFL now and the offensive coordinator to Penn State. So it's a combination of those two things. And I will take your pat on the back, but I will also accept a slap to the face for telling everybody to bet Michigan last week. <laughs> Plus seven and a half. You weren't the only one, though. A lot, of people, a lot of people were seeing the same thing you were. They turned it over three times. A turnover is worth four points. That's 12 points. If they don't lose three, nothing, it's a different game, but that's whatever. Ifs and buts are candy and nuts and all that. Um, we all have, I believe, a piece of Utah State from the other day. Yeah. It's 20 and a half now. I imagine, wink, wink, that number is going to close a little bit lower as we get to Saturday. I was looking at Indiana minus three at UCLA. Huge correction from the summer number when UCLA was like a nine or a 10 point favorite. Oh. Indiana, I know it was Western Illinois, but they were laying 80 points live on Friday night. <laughs> they were up like 77 to three. Um, that offense is very good. So I like Indiana. I'll lay the three. And can I go back to Michigan? Can I lay 22 and a half? <laughs> sure. I mean, they're going to pound this team. They're playing Arkansas <laughs> State. This is 35 nothing. This is. 42 to seven. Yeah. I know we don't want to go back to Michigan collectively, but we all know they're going to cover this weekend, right? I, no, that, that, that's the I'm thing. We, 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 there, there is an opportunity here because they didn't look good last week. They didn't look good this week. They weren't as good as Texas. Like, yeah. like what they do, what they do offensively, Texas was going to shut that down. They don't have nope. a deep passing game and playmaker. They, they have a good running game. And they can control the line of scrimmage against Arkansas State. Yeah, they, what is that? Twenty-two and a half? Is that what that is, Sammy? I think it is. Yeah, that's it. Came down from twenty-four on the open. Yeah, it's, yeah. I'm, I might, I might have to look into telling you there because I, I can see that same thing as well. I, I know they're pretty down in Ann Arbor right now, being there last week uh, for that game. But I, I think this is a pretty good, good spot against uh, Butch Jones and all, and all Arkansas State there, uh, Jeff. What are we looking at in the in the Heisman market? You saw Ashton Genty last week. Yeah, like is he? Does he have a chance? Because I know Quinn Ewers currently yeah. is the favorite in the Heisman market. Uh, we we know your guy Dylan Gabriel was, and he no longer is. Like this is a market that you're going to see wild yeah. swings throughout the year uh, at the top of the odds board. Like like, do you think he realistically has a chance to? A win, yeah. B B in New York, or C like are they just going to lose too many games down the road? Maybe and because they didn't win that game at Oregon, he's yeah. kind of an afterthought. But yeah. so are, are, are you are you buying him at twenty two to one or whatever the heck he is? Shame they didn't win at Oregon. Um, I look, guys, I I don't think he can win this award, but I think he could be in New York, and I don't know if that means you should play this or not. Um, you know, if he ends up with over two thousand yards or twenty two hundred yards, I know he was said he wants twenty five hundred yards. Um, and ends up with, you know, 2000 yards and 30 touchdowns, whatever he, I mean, he's got uh, six or seven already, right? Eight, eight, nine, something like that. Um, then yeah, I think he'll get an invite, but I, I don't know how a group of five running back. And I don't think Boise could be a playoff team is going to win the Heisman guys. I, look, we've only had two non-quarterbacks win in the last, I think 14 years or 16 right. years. And they're, they're Alabama players, right? They're Devonte Smith and, and Derek Henry, like I two first round picks. And I think Genty might be a first round pick, even though we've devalued that position in the draft a little bit, but I, I think he'll be New York. I, I just don't know if, I just I feel very comfortable. He's not going to win guys. So I would not wager on him. Uh, Cause I don't think he's a real chance to win. You know who else is going to New York, guys? Cam Ward. He'll be there. Cam <laughs> Ward's going to New York. Yeah, he is. <laughs> you, we we get to do we get to do this two two years in a row. You, you you're going to be there all year long, all year long, all year long, and then you, you're you're going to get passed in the final furlong. Well, I didn't bet him. I just want Miami to go to the playoff. That's oh, all well, I care well, so about. So do I. I want Miami yeah. to go to the playoff too. Well, laying a big number against Ball State this week. By the way, I don't know if I can. If I can get there, that'll be that'll be. It's going to be an interesting game next week. By the way, Miami playing UCF, that that, that, that you know, USF rather mm -hmm. up there in Tampa. We'll be curious to see because uh, that's the type of game in the past that the Canes have had a uh, had trouble with. But did you do you have any uh, any Heisman bets in pocket? Just Jackson Dart fourteen to one. We yeah. talked about it on this show. I think Will's got a piece of that too. I mean, that was that number at fourteen to one with how fast they're playing this year. They're just, they're going to score on everybody. And they might lose some games at Ole Miss, obviously. But even when they lose, they're going to score 35. He's going to put up insane numbers all year. 
I just wish Lane Kiffin were a little bit more aggressive in terms of running up the score. He's just so <laughs> shy about you know, being a good sport. And as soon as he gets a big lead, the game is over. No, he, he, uh, he, he's, he's certainly trying to, uh, to get Dart his numbers. I, I do think Dart is still live here. I also have one more thing bear um, on the FCS side of things. So something, I don't know what it is. Something's going wrong at Fordham. And we, we do this show on Wednesdays this year. We don't have any numbers up. Fordham is playing Stony Brook and we're probably oh, going to bet Wolves. against my neck of the woods. Let's, let's go. We're probably going to bet against Fordham. It is so bad at Fordham. They were a 25 point favorite last week against central Connecticut, 25 point favorite and lost by 30. Yeah. Wow. 33 to three. That's Ooh. not good. That's not good for Fordham. I don't That's... know what the number is going to be, but we're going to be, I can obviously text the boys. We're probably going to be looking to play Stony Brook. We just need to see what the number is going to come out. Is, is this uh is this in the uh the mean street to Suffolk County on the North Shore? This is a uh, home game for Fordham. So it's at FU. I'm I'm sure the home field advantage there is, is gonna give him a point of Program that Joe Moore had built. <clears throat> Falling on hard times. <laughs> <laughs> a group, group of five quick. Like uh, you mentioned Boise, Jeff. Uh, Memphis, they go to Florida State and yeah. win this week, but they uh that's a that's a pretty decent win for them, even though Florida State is uh, nowhere near as good as we thought they might be. Look, I I, um, I know Ryan Silverfield well. There, the Memphis head coach is my former offensive line coach with the Vikings. Um, I root for him any chance I can. But I, I I mean, I they just don't have the players Florida State has, and I understand Florida State has not played well this year. But I think at some point, guys, that does sort of matter, right? If Florida State can lean on Memphis in a way that. Memphis won't see the rest of the season because they don't play teams like like Florida State. So I, I know this number's kind of fluctuated this week, Will, but I have nothing on this game. I, I hope Memphis wins. I hope Ryan wins. He's playing Norvell, who's his mentor as well, right? Was there with Norvell at, at Memphis. But I think they don't have enough dudes to, to win this game, even though I think a quarterback, they can be competitive against DJU. Yeah, I mean, look, Florida State, if there's ever a spot to get back on track, they've had a week to lick their wounds and, you know, a couple losses. You figure they're motivated, they're focused. I just, I can't lay points with that quarterback. So I haven't bet it. If I had to bet it, it, it would be Memphis. Uh, you're, you're right around that key number of seven. I think it's mostly six and a half. It'd be Memphis or nothing but a game. Uh, again, a, a game I haven't bet yet. They came in, they laid five and a half. They laid six on the Knolls. Um, I am not involved. Let me just give you the preseason number for Florida State Memphis. 26, 16 and a half. Wow. So it's moved 10 points. I usually, you don't want to be on the wrong side of a 10 point move. No, I, I, I have zero interest in, in playing this because again, there is no, no result, no outcome here that I would be shocked at. You could tell me Memphis wins by double digits or Florida state wins by double digits. Neither would surprise me. So. Another week in the books. Uh, we, we, we've had a couple of good weeks so far. At, fun, as always. Uh, look forward to doing it again next week. Appreciate you guys. Bear, I joked with the guys before we got in Gamble Group Chat, what was going to be the one play I made uh, from Sammy during the show? And um, I, I'm, it's going to be Fordham. But, but uh, fade, f fade Fordham. Fade Fordham. The Stony Brook Seawolves, who went to Oregon a couple of years ago, played at Eugene. That game was closer than it should have been. So I can't wait for that number to drop. Uh, let's get to, to my fade of the week before we get into our best bets. I'm going to fade the points between Utah and Utah State. We talked a little bit about this earlier with the guys. Cam Rising hurt his hand last week uh, against Baylor, and then Utah's offense got shut down because guess what? They're playing a true freshman backup quarterback who is Zach Wilson's brother. He is young. He's inexperienced. And if he has to play at any length this week, including maybe the entire game because Cam Rising doesn't play, Utah's not going to score points. Their goal of this game is to get out of it with a win and go play Oklahoma State with, with, with a healthy Cam Rising. I do not expect, I don't think anyone does, for Rising to be out next weekend. But if he doesn't play this weekend, Bear, Utah's not going to score points. On the flip side, Utah State just scored zero points in the Coliseum to USC. They are struggling on offense. Yeah, the game is at home. But because Utah has played without Cam Rising over the years, they understand how they have to win these games. Defense, run the football, no turnovers. This game's going to be 21-7, 28-0. I'll take the under of 45 in this game. I think this number is going to fly down bare as well, so I got a good number now at 45. I'll take it. I'd prefer 28-7 as opposed to 28-0. Yes. 
Uh, I think we both. I think we both would. Did you catch my drift? <laughs> I think we would, but that number's long gone. I, I would have taken 21 and a half is what it was at, and now it's at 20. It's at 20. I think it, it, it goes down uh, as well. All right, Bear, time for our best bets presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. What are you looking at for this weekend? I'm looking at a classic letdown spot. Uh, for Texas here, you you have a team that you're fading, that you're fading a team that you're fading. I, I think Texas is worth fading this week as a 35 point favorite at home against UTSA. Like a good luck to Sark and Jeff Banks and, the, and staff getting that team ready to play after going on the road to Ann Arbor and annihilating Michigan last week. Uh, you're looking at a team that now has to come home off of that big win. They're now second in the polls. Quinn Ewers is the Heisman favorite. Uh, maybe they're the Maybe they're the team that beats Georgia. Maybe they're the team that wins the national title. All the hype. Everything's great in Austin. And here comes old UTSA fresh off of, what, a 48-10 or whatever that game was against Texas State last week. Uh, good, good luck putting putting that film on for the, uh, for the team <laughs> and, and having them uh, be able to give uh, 100% after selling out last week uh, in Michigan. Everything pointing towards that game. You get that win. Come back home off a big win against a team that you're a massive favorite against. You know you can go out and win like a 75% effort, and it shouldn't be an issue. The combination of that and the combination of Jeff Trailer's team uh, coming off of an embarrassing loss last week, you know, at a big, against a big-name school, uh, they'll be out to put forth a little better, better performance. So Texas isn't going to lose, but uh, laying 35, I, I think that's a, a little bit steep there. What happened to UTSA's offense, by the way? Struggling. It is. It is Frank, not. Been Frank good. Harris finally I, I gone. Know, after I know, years. but but Owen McCown mm-hmm. has uh, has not been able to sort of pick up the slack today. Have not been able to score points. Uh, I'm with you there in this letdown. So, I mean, if UTSA gets ten points, that's probably enough. There. I, I mean, Texas is just not gonna. It, this is the thing about college sports, man. Is you get these emotional roller coasters. We saw last weekend, right? How many teams? Penn State, Oregon to an extreme. But obviously, Notre Dame, like, slow starts after big weekends or, or, or poor play. Uh, I'm with you on this one. Um, all right, my my best bet is going to be something that Sammy mentioned earlier in the show, and I, I love this wager. Indiana, minus three on the road at UCLA. It's worth pointing out, there is no home field advantage in the Rose Bowl, Bear. This is yeah. this is minus three on a neutral site, essentially. Um, here's the reason why I like Indiana for a couple reasons. Um, I like their coaching staff. Kirk, Kirk Sinetti came over from, from JMU. He brought over a bunch of his players to instill a different culture for the Hoosiers. And yeah, they have played nobody, but they have kicked nobody's butt bare. Like they have done a great job of just, in, in, you know, 77-3 against Western Illinois, 31-7 against Florida National. Like they've done a great job of handling business, again, with a brand new pieces around them. So I like the coaching staff and I like their play style. They are a Havoc creator. So Havoc is when you're able to, defensively, to force tackles for loss, pressure, sacks, turnovers. They have done a great job now scheming up the two teams they played. On the flip side, Bear, I UCLA might get there eventually, but I don't like their coaching staff at the moment. They're young. They're raw head coach, obviously. And the Hawaii game was bad. Now, they have a week off to prepare for Indiana. I get it, Bear. But you're going to play in a dead Rose Bowl. The students are not in town yet. Not that they're close to the Rose Bowl anyways. But no. you're going to have... Look, I've been to 50 games of the Rose Bowl to watch the Bruins play. You're going to have 20,000 people there, and 12 of them are going to be wearing Indiana colors. Like, it's just going to be a yeah, dead— I was going to say 30,000. <laughs> okay, okay, 30,000. 30, well, that's okay. 30,000 with 17,000 wearing Indiana colors. I, I just think this is a bad spot for the Bruins. Uh, Indiana's energy, I like their energy and their coaching staff. So give me the Hoosiers here uh, getting uh, his first Big Ten win as Indiana head coach. There's no, there's no better place on earth than the Rose Bowl on January 1st. Absolutely agree. But uh, out, outside of that, it can be uh, <laughs> rough sledding as, as, a, uh, as a home field. So uh, best bet, Texas, uh, San Antonio, plus 35. Mentioned at the top of the show, uh, Tulane plus 13.5 and, and Wyoming plus 11.5. Two other games I have my eye on this week before we go. Uh, Temple getting 17.5 against Coastal Carolina. Uh, you just got to bet on Temple because when when else are you going to have an opportunity to bet on a team through two games that scored 14 points and combined for 26 turnovers and penalties through, through two games? And and then I'm going to play Kennesaw State uh, against your uh, San Jose State team last week, uh, laying 
19, the week after Coach Ken beat a service academy. Not like the Spartans offense is any good no, either. They were, they were bad. Oh, I was, uh, oh, that was a rough watch, buddy. They, the, yeah. the one thing, so do you watch the games you wager on? Do you try to, to, try to watch them? I do try and watch them, yes. It's just going to depend on uh, yeah. where I where I am. And uh, unfortunately, we don't have a ton of TVs in the uh, in, in the green room on the road. We only got like three, and one of them has to be on the big noon game yeah. at all times because it's coming right from the truck. So we don't we don't we don't fortunately have a, a ton of TV. I mean, I'm going to fire something up on my laptop, but uh, I had no desire to uh, to watch that game after seeing. Yeah. Uh, the, the the drive chart on the score tracker last week. So, the 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 point I was I was making is that sometimes we wager on these stinky dogs, and you have to watch them play, and it is an atrocious watch. So I'm watching all these games last night, you know, last weekend, but my iPad is on the you know it's on the the uh, the CBS Sports Net feed of uh, Air Force and uh, and San Jose State, and buddy, it was a bad watch. So sometimes you, these games are just. Oh, buddy, they're hard to watch. But, uh, hey, man, it cast. I'll take it. So I'm with you. San Jose State offensively looks sluggish. They're off a big win. Uh, I think this is the way to go here. And so hopefully Kennesaw catching uh, 19. Their offense did not look very good uh, as well. But they did hang with UTSA in the opener and then uh, got beat by Louisiana last week. So we'll see if the uh, if Kennesaw State can uh, hang within that big number. Uh, appreciate everybody here hanging with us for about the last hour or so, uh, whether it's been where you consume your podcast on Spotify, Apple, uh, wherever else, whether it's been here on uh, on YouTube, the Bear Bits YouTube channel as well. Please uh, subscribe, rate, and review. Um, hopefully we we'll continue our winning ways going. And remember, the less you bet, the more you lose when you win. <laughs>